Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shop Mirror today. Thank you to go out today, two things came out, two things are on sale today. Today though, there's only a few things that come out in stores that are like big release wise. I know uh, Judy, that one releases today, as well as uh, The Gallows uh, Part 2. Other than that though, there's a couple other things as well. Uh, also though, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff, so definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And as always too, let me know in the comments below, you know, what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed, you know, if you, what you guys thought of them, if you guys have seen them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go, and there's definitely a lot of people here doing last minute Christmas shopping. Look how uh, it's like totally packed up. Usually like, it's like, you know, a little afternoon now, and it's never like this jam packed, but yeah. I was expecting this. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing too how busy it is over in Walmart. I'm also not expecting them to have the new stuff out on the shelf because you know this location doesn't always and like since it's probably like a lot more craziness because of like last minute everything I feel like the things won't be out in here but we will see though. We shall see. Yeah but it's definitely a lot busier in here than it's been in the past. I see some kind of like a stand here that's like um I guess some like I don't know what these ones are, like some stuff on sale here, like some Warner Brothers titles and stuff like that. And I, it seems to be mainly Warner Brothers things in here, like some DVDs and stuff mixed in, like Small Foot for $13, Lego Movie for, that doesn't seem like a super sale on that one, $24.99. Uh, Dog's Way Home here. So it looks like some of the stuff that was like Black Friday deals and stuff here. But I see over here, yeah, everyone is coming by, but like, new release wise it doesn't look like they changed anything out here like i said the only big things today was going to be uh judy uh and then um the gallows too which i feel like they should have this stuff out at walmart though we'll see that this we'll check the section over there as well i feel like i said i feel like they probably didn't get to change this stuff because this one doesn't change it out always and i had a feeling today it was going to be like that but we'll still go over there and check just to see though over here though for the Christmas cards, it's totally picked over. There's like hardly any of them left here. So yeah, like definitely not too many last minute Christmas cards left here. Yeah, but as I was thinking though, I just got out of there and you know, over in the actual section too and they didn't have anything, uh, you know, out. I was kind of, I, I kind of had a feeling of that. Uh, but you know, gonna head over to Walmart now and hopefully they, ch you know, put out their new stuff. They should. I feel like that was gonna be even crazier over there. Cause as you can see, all these people that are coming in, I, I know that Walmart, you can see the parking lot is like jammed, but I have a feeling Walmart is going to be even crazier, but we'll see though. Yeah, but oof, it's, I, I knew it was going to be really jam-packed. Look at all the people coming out over there at Walmart. So yes, it's definitely busy, but we'll see when we get in there how busy, but I can guarantee it's going to be really jam-packed. But yes, the whole parking lot over here is totally, like, you know, really busy. But into Walmart we go. It sort of has like a Black Friday kind of like vibe going on here today. So I kind of expected that. But let's see though if they actually put out any of these movies. Because I kind of am not expecting it today. Even though there's new stuff out. Yeah, like I was thinking, there's like nothing over here. You know, it's, is there even spots for it like here? Like, um... What is this one? Rambo. Yeah, like none of it. I, I had a feeling about this, that like nothing was going to get switched over. Maybe Best Buy will, but I kind of was like expecting that today. Yeah, like nothing in here has changed and it's like real, like picked over and everything. But And, and this stuff isn't gonna change out to the beginning of the month. Like all the, oh no, wait a minute, there are, it's over here. So all the new releases are right here, not in the front. So they, they're kind of changing the way they're putting out their releases now. So they do have it over here. They have, um, this is one of the ones that came out today I'm going to be talking about at the end of this video. And it seems like it's one of those ones where it's um, the same price for the DVD and the Blu-ray. So the DVD is uh, $12.96. Uh, the Blu-ray is uh, $12.96 as well. But this movie here, which stars Ethan Hawke, and I really like this one. Like I said, I'm going to be talking about this at the end of this video. But this was a really, really good movie about his character who gets out of prison. I think it was like after 21 years. And when he gets out, he ends up finding this baby. And, and he starts getting, he gets this job. 
at this like fast food place and he finds a here's a baby in a dumpster and he ends up taking the baby to take care of it and it's like instead of going to the police and it's kind of like what happens from that uh, the other one today was uh the movie starring renee zellweger uh judy and that one is on 1996 for the uh blu-ray and then 1496 for the dvd and then uh kill team was one of the other ones today that one's uh 1296 for the uh, dvd 1496 for the blu-ray and like i said gallows too which i really like this one i know uh some of the reviews were like uh mixed on this movie but i really really i you know i thought the first movie was okay but this one i actually like this one a, t a lot lot more and i felt like it was a it wasn't done to all found footage like it had like a tiny bit of found footage but it was mainly like just like done like a regular movie as opposed to like all with the camera footage and everything and uh they, the um the dvd of that one is 12.96 these ones here I guess, I don't know if these were new ones that they haven't put out yet, but it's funny how the sections have changed because it used to be in the front is where they had all the new stuff. And now it seems like they're changing it around and mixing in more over here. Let's see if there's anything TV-wise over here. Doesn't look like I see anything uh, different over here. Yeah, and then they have like some of these sets here, like Magnum PI ones. This I think is like a newer like repackage of this one. I don't remember seeing in the past. But other than that over here, the one area too you sometimes have to check I've noticed in here is um, over here on the side. Sometimes they put other movies here as well. I just I've discovered like right over here, sometimes they mix things in. Like the, like last week they put like Trick over here, and then like I think Bernie the Dolphin, which and like Acceleration. So like seems like they're mixing things up the way they're putting them out in here now, from what I can tell. And this past weekend, I saw a couple of films in theaters. Uh, the first one I saw was I actually saw Cats. Now, I know that one got really, really bad reviews. And the version I saw, uh, now, they uh, because the movie wasn't totally finished when they got it released, they had to rush it to get it finished. Some of the CGI wasn't finished, and this, there was a couple mistakes and everything. Like um, like Judy Dench's, you saw her like human hand with her wedding ring. And I saw a couple other human hands in the movie as well. And I was thinking, did these cats just have human hands? or what but the version now is supposed to be updated and they fixed a couple of those things but it was one of those movies though within the first 10 minutes I saw people getting up and leaving and there was a decent amount of people in the theater like it was you know maybe 40 by the time it was over it was like me my brother and these two girls and that was it, it was they all were gone and like even I after like um the first 10 minutes when I saw those guys leaving I'm thinking I don't know if I can I can sit through this. I don't know if I can handle this. I will say, though, the movie did get um, a little a little bit better as it went along. Maybe, like, um, after about 40 minutes or so, it got a little bit better. But it had, like, so many of these strange sequences. Like, and I, I, I never really had seen any of these, the stage play or anything like that. So, I, you know, the, you know, so I didn't know too much about it you know I knew the way it was done you know originally though which was done with them the characters done kind of like Zoobly Zoo you know where it was they were wearing costumes and if their paint you know faces were painted like cats and they had like fur they were wearing and that kind of stuff this one was all done motion capture and it comes across so peculiar like it, it the movie though honestly and it, I, it really wasn't good. I mean, like the, the the bad reviews, I can get it with this one. Like I I understand it. It just wasn't like even the music, and like some of the music was kind of interesting. Like it reminded me of like Clockwork Orange. It had like this really like '70s kind of feel to it. Like some of like the score and stuff like that that they used in it. If you guys saw it though, let me know what you guys thought of it. But I, it's not one of those ones to rush out. But yeah. the other one though, that I saw was, you know, uh, Star Wars, um, The Rise of uh, Sky, of, um, I believe, I always mixing up what it's called, I believe it's The Rise of Skywalker, I believe that's what it's called, you know, but episode nine. That one though is another one that's got kind of divided reviews, you know, you know Cats is especially, that's like a 20%, uh, Skywalker, you know, the new Star Wars I think is like a 58%. Honestly though, I like that one. I really like the new movie a lot. I thought The Last Jedi was okay. I didn't 
thing, you know, I didn't notice all the terrible problems with that one because some people really dislike that one. But I honestly like this one. I'm not going to talk too much about the plot or anything, but I really did. I, I liked I liked the story. I thought that you know what they did with the characters and everything was really good. I I, I was really impressed too with how they were able to use the footage that they had of, of the late Carrie Fisher and and make it work in the film the way they did it with like because um, I was reading into it they was like doing some rotoscoping kind of like with with um in Wagons East with uh, John Candy when he passed away before it was finished they had to use uh like a one scene again and like um some like reuse some footage and body double from the back and stuff like that and I believe that's kind of what they were doing with this one was they were rotoscoping stuff and using scenes that they didn't use in the other ones and then having the actors say different things to and make it kind of work and, and like I said I really thought they made it work well uh, let me know though if you guys saw you know the new stories from what you guys thought of it as well or what you saw uh, this past weekend if you guys got to check anything out into Best Buy we go over here though I see Judy here for $19.99. I don't see the Gallows Act 2. I have to check over in the actual section to see if that's anywhere, but I don't see any spots or anything like that for here. But like I said, head over to the actual section to see what else they have over there as well. But over here though in the actual section though, I'm trying to see if there's anything else different in here. It seems to be all pretty much the same stuff from the last couple weeks here. The only thing different that I saw over here was uh, the Kill Team and that one is um, $14.99 for that one. This one, I actually really like this one a lot. I don't see though, like I was saying, I didn't see in the front and I don't see here the Gallows uh, Act 2. So I'm not sure if they're going to have that one or they just didn't put it out yet. But they did, like I said, they showed, they did have that though in uh, Walmart. But other than that though I don't really see anything else different all this stuff was here like last week I showed this stuff that was on sale uh, but doesn't seem to be anything really different it is interesting coming out though on you know doing a Tuesday shopping video DVD Tuesday one when it falls on Christmas Eve because I don't think it's happened like that um, that I can think of and you know last year though it was on Christmas but I don't think I've ever been here, like, at least filming it when it was, like, you know, all these people out and everything. But like I said, doesn't seem to be anything else in here too different as far as I can tell, though. But anyway, though, guys, that's off my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again, though, for all the support in the comments on these videos. Let me know, though, in the comments below, though, if you guys, you know, ended up going out today and, you know, picking up anything, what you guys ended up picking up on DVD or, you know, Blu-ray or 4K, if you guys got anything uh, today. Also, too, be sure to let me know what you guys thought of all the stuff that, uh, you know, the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, you know, what you guys thought of them. Also, if you guys plan on picking uh, any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Fox. It's the movie uh, Ad Astra, which stars uh, Brad Pitt. This is one that I did not get to see in theaters. And this is basically, though, about Brad Pitt's character, who is an astronaut. Uh, his father was an astronaut, and his father had gone on this mission years and years back where he went to, I think it was like to Neptune, working on this kind of secret project up there, dealing with like something like with like power and something like that up there. But what basically what had happened though was his father had gone missing and like was pretty much presumed dead. That's what Brad Pitt's character thought for years and years that his father had died. And at the beginning of this movie though, you know, there was this sort of big solar flare that had happened. It had happened on Earth. It happened up in space. There was like a big explosion on one of the um, the uh, kind of like uh, spaceships up there, kind of space stations, that kind of like one of the idle ones that sits up there where they do like experiments and stuff like that. There was a big ex uh, explosion there. And basically, though, uh, Brad Pitt's character is called into uh, NASA and they say we want, we want to talk to you and we want you to go on this mission to look into these solar flares and see what's going on because they believe that these solar flares that are going on and what's happening has something to do with what his father was working on you know uh, up in space and uh, Brad Pitt's character is like well wh wh what, what do you mean and they're saying well we actually think that you know I know you think your father had died but we have a reason to believe that he may be alive and it's basically, though, about Brad Pitt going on this uh, mission to get up to where his father is or try and see if his father's still there and see if he can figure out what's going on to, you know, stop these flares and everything and kind of continue his father's work of what he was doing up there. And uh, it's, it's, it's set in the future, though, so it's like... Um, 
basically uh, space travel is not like it is now where it's basically in the in the future in this world that's set in anybody can go up to like the moon on trips and they have like um it's almost like a tourist destination to go to the moon so there's like some really interesting aspects to this movie it was really really well filmed it has kind of like a 2001 kind of look to it the way the movie looks on here though it has a uh, deleted scenes with optional commentary track on here it has a bunch of different featurettes on here as well as a um a commentary track on the film as well but like i said really really interesting space film here the next one here is one that i really liked and this is from uh, dark sky films and this uh, stars uh, cm punk and i thought he did a really really good job in this movie this is a movie here called a uh, girl on the third floor i think this is the second film that he acted in. he also uh, acted in the film uh, rabid which was directed by the soska sisters which um this one he's like the lead of this film and this is basically though about his character and he had just bought this house which was kind of like a um one of those kind of fixer-upper kind of houses that he wants to work on and kind of get it ready for when his, because his wife is pregnant. And she's kind of working in the in her uh, office, the job that she's at, and she kind of can't come to the house until it's like more together and fixed up and everything. She has a bunch of work she still has to do. So he goes there to kind of take on this project to kind of fix up this house, to kind of get it, you know, figured, you know, together and ready for when she gets there. And uh, as soon as he gets to this house, though, the neighbor next door kind of comes by and she's kind of acting a little odd and in the house though it's all sorts of weird things going on like he notices this weird like rotten part of the of the um in the like the drywall it's kind of rotting away there's like this goo kind of stuff leaking from the um like the outlets the you know electrical outlets and then like the you know things are happening like part of the ceiling falls in and it's basically though about you know i don't want to ruin anything about this movie and it, it's like got some extremely uh gross stuff that happens in it but it's also really really creepy it has this vibe uh, like the director of this movie if they ever made like a remake of um Hellraiser like a like a reboot of Hellraiser like I could totally see him directing that like uh, you know because like he th this movie has like a slight Hellraiser kind of vibe to it with because it's on the house and what's going on in there and some of the visuals because there's like um when he's in this house and weird things start to happen and he starts seeing weird things leaking from the outlets and he starts seeing this kind of girl walking around and there's this one girl that like you know is like the neighbor that's coming by and kind of coming around and like it, all, all sorts of things are happening but he's like seeing weird things but and there's like these marbles that are rolling around in the house but it's got this like really terrifyingly creepy vibe especially when it when this one scene dealing with like these like a whole bunch of these marbles and what's happening it is very very creepy movie i like i said i thought cm punk though did a really really good job in this one highly recommend this one if you guys have seen this one let me know what you guys thought but a really really cool haunted house movie that's like cause when it comes to haunted house movies sometimes they're always kind of like the same they always have like the same vibe Vibe. this one totally turns into those kind of movies on its head and is like really different and like also like i said really really gory as well it has on here the comedy track on here with director um producer travis stevens as well as a trailer and a teaser on this one the next one here is from um rlj uh entertainment and this is a movie one that i give a top recommendation to really love this movie which stars ethan hawk and uh, it's also produced by Blumhouse, and it's uh, called Adopt a Highway, and it's basically though about Ethan Hawke's character, and he was he was in prison. His character was in prison for 21 years. And he's in this beginning of this movie, he's just getting out of prison. He went to prison. It was kind of like when they had like the three strike program. And when after three strikes in, I think it, in, you know, in California, you go to prison. I don't think that exists anymore because they were mentioning in the movie that it's not like that anymore. But it was like these small little things that he was, you know, arrested for, like nothing. You know, like now things that are not even like illegal, especially the last strike was something that now in, in California is not even the slightest bit illegal at all. And that was what he was in prison for, was that was his third strike. And basically, though, uh, you know, he gets out of prison. He has to kind of try and figure out, you know, what he's going to do, uh, where he's going to go. And he ends up getting this job working at this uh, fast food restaurant, like cleaning up, you know, dishes. And he has to, uh, you know, he's just about to, when this movie, you know, picks up, is where he's getting ready to get off probation. Like, he's just about done. He's going to be able to leave the state soon and everything. But one day, though, when he's helping, you know, um, staying late at his job, he hears in the dumpster outside this baby crying. And he ends up, you know, um, you know, finding this baby in there. And, and 
instead of going to the cops immediately, he decides to take the baby home uh, to his apartment, you know, or the hotel where he's staying at and he's living at, to take care of this baby. And he, like, doesn't want to... Um, you know, to kind of, he basically feels like this is kind of what's saving him is finding this baby and, uh, you know, uh, taking care of this baby and helping this baby because the baby's sick when he finds that someone abandoned the baby in this dumpster. And like, um, it's just this really like, as soon as this happens though, it's not all on, uh, on that. It's about, that's a big part of this movie, but it's also about too his character too, kind of not knowing how to use the computer because he never used computers before he went to prison. He's like kind of trying to learn technology, kind of trying to figure out exactly what he's going to do with himself and where he, what he's going to do with his life. And the movie takes these unexpected turns and it is a very, very uh, emotional movie too. It's very, very sad. I, I, I said though, I absolutely love this movie. Uh, you know, Ethan Hawke though did a, you know amazing performance in this movie. He's in really, a lot of really, really great movies. Like, um, one called pre, you know, that are, are kind of underrated ones. Like there was one other one that was an underrated movie that he was in, uh, Predestination, that you don't hear about too often. I really loved him in that movie. But you know, he's always good in everything. Of course, you know, Boyhood, everything. But like th this is like I feel like going to be one of the more underrated ones that m maybe not many people will see. And you guys definitely should check this one out. Uh, the next one here is from Sony, and this is a movie here called uh, Overcomer, and this has the DVD, uh, you know, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and a digital copy of the film. This is a you know faith-based film. And it's basically, though, about um, in this small town, there was like a, um, uh, like kind of like a, um, like a car, uh, factory where they were doing like a, a plant where they were doing lots of different cars and car productions and everything and the plant ended up just closing down and it's this movie though is mainly about the coach who um but coaches the, the basketball team and as soon as this um you know uh, closes down he knows that a lot of people are gonna have to leave the town they're not gonna be able to live there anymore and his team though is dwindled down so many people have had to leave because their families had to leave because their parents lost their jobs and uh, it cuts in you know right after the you know they find out about the factory closing to five months, five months later, and uh, his team is really small now. He hardly has anybody left. Uh, people are continuously leaving uh, the town. Lots of things have closed down, and his character though has to um, kind of you know start doing other things in the, at the school, like coaching other things. And he, one of the things that he gets brought on to coach is the track team. And he's not really interested in doing that. He doesn't know anything about track. It's not something he's interested in. But he ends up uh, meeting this one girl who's the only girl who comes to sign up for track. And her character, though, she has some problems where, like, she's... um been like she like, kind of like steals things around like, like like kind of a kleptomaniac like with like like stealing like people's uh, headphones and iPad iPods and that kind of stuff and you know uh, but she comes to sign up but and she also was a runner before but she has asthma and it's kind of like um he's coaching her and trying to you know um train her and at the same time too his character goes to this um volunteering at this hospital and he meets this uh, man who's in the hospital uh suffering through diabetes and he's going through like um having like dialysis and like from kidney failure and all these type of things and he becomes friends with him and his character comes into play in a big part of this movie as well but i thought this was actually really really well put together on here though it has a whole bunch of different features as well it has like a making of on here it has bloopers it has additional scenes in here here. It has one thing on here too, which was because um, there was like in the opening of this movie, they had this really well done drone shot like going into the the window of the school and then going into the uh, bas basketball co you know court inside. And it was really really well done, and they had uh, you know a making of on there showing too how they put that scene together. And like it's uh, you know it's all it's all made by these brothers. And like the two brothers write the movie, uh, the one uh, brother you know directs the movie and acts in the movie. One of the other brothers is one of the producers. So they all kind of work together as a family on this. So there's a bunch of different like interesting uh, making ofs and stuff like that on this one here as well. And the next one here is from Samuel Goldwyn Films. This is another one is a top recommendation. I love this movie. This is totally my kind of movie. I really love the cast of this movie as well. It's a movie here called Paradise Hills, which stars uh, Emma Roberts, uh, Daniel McDonald, you know, who is from uh, the movie Patty Cakes, uh, and uh, Aquafina, uh, you know, Mila Jolovich, uh, Eliza Gonzalez, you know, who is in like Baby Driver and a bunch of different stuff. And it's basically though about Emma Roberts' character, who, and this is all set in the future, and she's sent to, she's, you know, um, 
her boyfriend proposes to her and she doesn't like this guy. She doesn't want to marry him. He's like, she's not interested in him at all. And she gets sent to this kind of school. I mean, but the guy that she, you know, she wants to marry her is someone that comes from a lot of money. And like, she's kind of, you know, her mother wants her to marry this guy. And, and she's sent to this kind of like, um, finishing kind of school, which is kind of like to almost sort of like a, a brainwashing kind of thing. The, the way it's kind of starts off seeming like it's going on here to kind of like uh, make her and like uh, kind of like make her like uh, want to marry this guy. And it's one of these movies too. It's like there's a lot of stuff that's sort of left to interpretation of what's going on here, what they're doing and everything. But basically though, um, you know, Aquafina's character and Daniel McDonald's character, you know, are people that are, you know, in the school there. And she kind of, you know, meets them or at this program there, meets them, become, becomes friends with them. And Emma Rogers' character really wants to leave this place. And it's like, um, the way it's shot too, it has this like, you know, this really cool setting of where this is filmed. I think it was all shot in Spain and it has this amazing like locations. And like, um, uh, I, I don't know, it's just, it's hard to explain. Mila Jovic's character is the head of the school or the head of the program who's kind of like running this whole thing and it, it the movie has like a whole lot it kind of has a vibe a little bit i guess you would say to like a current movie that like in the recent years that this has a similar sort of feel to is like cure for wellness a little bit not exactly and then it has vibes of like um with the lighting to like argento's stuff like suspiria and stuff with the way this movie was lit and like the costume designs in here too like everyone's like wardrobe and everything is probably some of the best I've seen in a long time. Like it is, it is really, really cool and like really well thought out. Like, you know, with the looks and the stylized, like a highly stylized movie. It has on here though, a bunch of different uh, featurettes on here um, about the story and the casting as well as the visual effects, you know, to kind of build the area because they had to, you know, where, where this was shot, like to kind of accentuate some of the scenes and everything. But another one of these ones, I would definitely recommend you guys check out. Really like this one. The next one here is from um, Music Box Films. And this one is finally out because um. This show, when I first saw the first season of this one, I like. I, I was one of those shows. I watched uh, like every episode in like a day and a half. And this is the second season here. Uh, and there was a r American remake of this as well that didn't. It only lasted, I think, one season. And this is uh, this complete uh, second season here of the show, The Returned. And this is a French show, and it's um. Yeah, it's basically though about like uh, characters that had died had kind of c have come back to life and came to this town, and you know th that was what the the first season was about. And this is like the characters now and more people are coming to this town that are you know have um, died, and it's kind of like they they have like a there's something about them that's off and a little bit different, and it's kind of like it's unexplainable of how have they you know come back and how are they come back to life, and because they don't remember certain things they. Kind kind of remember up until they died and it's a really interesting you know well made show but like I was saying though uh, this show had a big gap between when the first and second season were shot I think it was like I might be wrong but I know it was like at least two years I think between you know when it came but this is a really really well done show like I said here's a look though inside this one but like I said one of you guys know that this one was available if you guys have seen this show though let me know what you guys thought of this one but this is one I really really liked the next one here, though, is from Severn Films, and this is one that I was so excited when I heard they were releasing this. This is, like, one of my top favorite uh, kids' movies of all time. Like, as a kid, I remember renting this one so much, and then I remember forgetting what it was, because as a little kid, I would rent this, and this happened to a lot of people, But and then I forgot what this was called, and then I saw in Blockbuster... Uh, when Blockbuster was starting to sell off a lot of their, you know, when DVDs had first came out and they were, Blockbuster was like, and DVDs were picking up and getting popular, the, uh, Blockbuster started selling their tapes off and they sold off a, a VHS tape of this. And then I was like looking at it and then that's how I just discovered what it was again. But they say movie here called The Peanut Butter Solution. Which is one of those movies. I've been somebody who's like been like a uh, cheerleader of this movie forever. Like if you guys look up this movie, I, I, I talked about this movie so many times throughout the years. Uh, you know, on different kind of videos and different vlogs and and um, uh, different old early DVD update videos and everything. So when I heard, like I said, heard this was coming out, was so excited about this. And this is from Severn uh, Films, has a line now from so called the Severn Kids line, which they're gonna start releasing kids films. So I'm really hoping they put out like, um, also like uh, like rare, like 
TV shows and stuff like that. Like, I'd love if they put out, like, um, the live-action My Pet Monster uh, one. Or, like, these are things I would think would be kind of cool. Or, like, the Popples, uh, you know, um, live-action movie. Like, some really obscure stuff that has never come out. Like, maybe Zoobly Zoo. Like, really obscure, like, stuff that's kind of been forgotten about. Let me know in the comments below, though, uh, you know, stuff that you would love to see Severin put out. Like, obscure movies and that kind of stuff. I, mean, I was thinking other ones, like George's Island, uh, Journey to Spirit Island, some, like, obscure ones that, that have never come to DVD or anything. But this movie, though, if you guys have never seen this movie, it's about this um, this kid who, you know, him and his friend, uh, they there was, like, a building that had a had had a terrible fire in it um and they both go in there to, to want to see it and the one kid ends up going in there first and uh he ends up going in there and seeing something that scares him to death and then the next day all of his hair falls out from seeing this you know this fright whatever he was that he sees in there and um you know without spoiling anything these characters come to him because when he loses his hair he's like afraid of going to school he doesn't want to do anything and uh, these characters come to him and you know and i don't want to ruin why or who they are or anything but basically because of how he helped these people uh they tell him about this concoction of this peanut butter with this weird mixture of like bugs and all these weird things to put on his hair and it makes his hair grow back but it won't stop growing and it becomes this nightmare and, it, and the movie goes in these insane directions like this one um the one art teacher and what he does and it's this one of these movies that i know a lot of people say that like scared them as a kid it is a little creepy but it also has like amazing aspects uh like this was like one of the first i think american um language like you know in english uh, times that celine dion did a song and she did uh, music in here listen to the magic man which like i love that song um and then like um also, this has really cool music as well, like synth music and this. I mean, it's one of these movies that is an absolute 100% must watch. I don't know, you know, um, if you never saw this before and you saw this now, I still feel like you'd still really like this movie because it is so out there and it's so peculiar and it's like, it just, it, it, it's just like, to me, it's one of those movies that you can go and watch again and again and again, like those movies that like, you know, I consider like some of my favorites. And when I say favorites, it's not always like the best movie of all time, but it's like the most watchable movie. Like this movie, uh, you know, it's Pat, Clifford, some of those movies that you can just watch again and again and again again and this is one of those movies on here though it has a whole bunch of different features it has the uh, you know the um it has the you know the regular cut of the film uh but it also has an extended u.s cut which was a it has three minutes uh it's three minute longer version of it and it has like a couple different added things into it it has a comte track on here with the producer as well as the main actor in here it has on here though and i watched through all the interviews on this one it has on here um interview on here with the producer interview with the actor who plays uh, connie in the film it has an interview on here um, talking about the other films in the series because this was like in a couple in a not movies that connected but in like a kids film series it has the Canadian trailer the US trailer picture quality though looks great but like I said if you guys have seen this movie let me know what you guys thought the next one here is from Severn Films as well this is a movie here called uh, V and it's another one I had never seen before this is from 1967 and it's a um a Russian film, and it's basically though it's hard to explain, but it was like um, these. Um, I think they were like um, this was adapted though into you know the same story by Mario Bava in the Black Sunday film. But it's basically like about a group of these like um, people in like you know training to be um, priests in like the priesthood, and they want some of these guys. They go on like this um, journey, and they come end up discovering this place where they find like um uh this like basically they find like this witch and there's like these crazy scenes of like um the witch is like flying and then when they discover the witch though later when they they leave uh they find they find like this this woman that like looks like this the witch that they, they discovered and then they have to like but they find her dead and then they had the one guy has to kind of watch her in this kind of mausoleum type place and then like all sorts of weird trippy out there kind of stuff happens it's a really really interesting movie like really hard to explain but a really really cool like out there film this has on here though a video interview uh with richard stanley it has on here though uh from the world of cosmos john Le um, lemon riley on the history of soviet fantasy and sci-fi it has short silent films on here as well as a theatrical trailer in this one
And the next ones here are all from MovieZing.com. I'll have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. And this one is also a Film Rise title. But this is the film uh, The Cat and the Moon, which is uh, you know stars uh, Alex Wolf. He also wrote and directed the film. I thought, though, he did an amazing job directing this film. You know, he's uh, known for being an actor because he's acted in stuff like Hereditary and stuff like uh, you know both of the new Jumanji films. But, you know, directing, though, I thought he did an amazing job you know putting this movie together because he wrote this film as well. And it's basically, though, and also it stars uh, Mike Epps. Uh, and Mike Epps, though, did an amazing job as well. It's a very different role for him because he's known for doing, like, you know, you know, comedy kind of movies and really different kind of stuff than this because this like, has a lot of, like, heavy drama, you know, to his character and what he goes through in his scenes and stuff. And he did an amazing job. Also, um, Skylar uh, Gizmodo is in this movie as well. And I, I've always been a fan of him because he was in, like, stuff like Time Freak. And he was in, um, you know, the Vacation Remake make and book smart and he plays like uh, Alex Wolf's friend that he meets and because it's basically those movies about Alex Wolf's character who comes to New York to stay with Mike Epps who's a friend of the family because his mother is away uh, she's away you know you find out more about what's going on throughout this movie but he basically has to stay with him to, you know, and kind of go to school in New York uh, for a, like a month or so. And it's basically when he gets there, though, he becomes friends with, you know, Skylar Gizmodo's character and then kind of gets in with his group of friends. And he also, uh, Skylar Gizmodo's character has this girlfriend and then Alex Wolf starts liking her and it becomes like this this kind of thing that goes along. And it's basically, though, uh, about all the kind of stuff that Alex Wolf's character goes through while he's out in New York and kind of like um, like the stuff that he does and messing around and it's just like a really really well done a character piece it's also like a really good like new york film like one of those movies that kind of has like a little bit of a vibe to like the film kids and hurricane streets and those kind of movies it has like a uh, like i don't know it's like a throwback kind of vibe to those kind of movies and it, like I said, it was really, really well directed. Really some very emotional scenes in here, like I was saying. So, like uh, Acting in here was really, really good. But one of these ones that I thought, you know, was definitely a must-watch. It's hard to explain everything in this one, but definitely a must-watch one here. Uh, the next ones here are uh, from MovieZing.com as well. And these are both uh, MTV titles. And this is a show that I had not seen. You know, I, I, I had saw, like, um, commercial of this when this was on. And they, it, it, I think it went for, like, five seasons. But this is uh, season one one and season two of Awkward here on DVD and this is a, a really fun show it's basically though about this girl who uh goes you know um back to you know to high school and um it becomes this huge misunderstanding because her character uh in the beginning of, this, of the show she ended up like um she was just basically going to take some Tylenol but ended up like spilling the Tylenol everywhere and then she dropped like the hair dryer fell into the bathtub and then like um she like basically they what ends up happening though was something happened to her and like she hurt herself and the, and the doctors and everyone thought that it was like she was trying to take her own life and it kind of sp when she goes to school it kind of spreads around the school but then like it's kind of like from all this that happened uh you know it's kind of this awkward thing but then she sort of starts to become popular in, in school and like um starts getting more friends because her character didn't really have friends when this starts and it's kind of all the kind of stuff that she goes through in high school and kind of dating and like all kinds of problems and everything but it's like i said it's a really really fun show here on uh season one though it has um all 12 episodes it has webisodes behind the scenes on season two it has webisodes as well as cast interviews on this one as well. The other one here, this is from MovieZing.com as well, and this is an MTV release. And this is a show that I not, didn't see as well either. I don't know how many seasons this one went for sure. This is called uh, Death Valley. A season one uncensored. This is the uncensored version of the show as well, and this is basically though kind of like um, Reno 911 a little bit because it and like cops and that kind of thing. Where some of it is done like like a cops kind of show where it's like a like a reality type show, but then other parts of it aren't. Like there's not a, not all of it is like reality TV the way it's filmed, but like the little bits and pieces of it are. But it's basically though about a. Um, uh, the police force and instead of being like police force for like humans and stuff like that this is set in a world where there's vampires zombies what was it vampires zombies and werewolves 
and um, they kind of appear up, you know, came popping up and everything. And these cops are going around to stop them and like deal with like, um, you know, vampires and werewolves and kind of all these kind of wacky problems and you know, things that happen and all these kind of things. And uh, I, you know, I thought this was actually a pretty fun show. Like I said, I totally missed this one when this was on, so I never got to see this one. But it has on here though. Like I said, all twelve episodes of season one on this one, and they, like I said, they're uncensored. This one here is from MovieZing.com as well. And this is also from uh, MRG, uh, Meridian Releasing Group. And I reviewed the first movie of this one uh, maybe a couple weeks back. And this is the second film. And this is called Parch 2 Hangry. And I will say I thought the, the second movie was a much more fun movie. I thought the first movie was fun, was was cool. But I thought this one, to me, was more interesting. I, I don't know. I like the characters in this one. I like what was going on. And it just, it just had this like interesting vibe. And this is done found footage style about like um, this girl who... Who's like a vlogger and she goes around and like travels to like other countries and does vlogs going there showing the things that she sees or her trip and everything and um but for now though she's kind of just going to do this vlog going to like this cabin with a group of her friends and like she's filming everything and all that kind of stuff and she goes out there, and the one guy that, that it's out there is like this guy who's kind of like doing this sort of science experiment. He has like this like science kit. He's messing around with. It. He's like dumping things into. It. He's going, oh, I, you know, I I need to some time to work on this. I got to work on this. And and what happens though is um, uh, and he's like, uh, well, this is like like an appetite suppressant or like no, it's supposed to make you want to eat this type of thing that he's working on. But the one night somebody dumps it into the water. And like they all go in there and go swimming, and he's like, "Oh, you got in there! It fell in the water! Get out!" And he's like panicking and having this like total like conniption about it. And of course, though, this stuff that's in there is making these people like ravaged and like crazy, and like cannibalistic, like in a sense, the way they're getting, and it becomes this nightmare going on. Like I said, I thought this was actually a really fun movie, though. Uh, the next one here is from MovieZing.com as well, and this is also from. Um, uh, Three Branches Entertainment, I believe, is the company. And this is a movie here called Warnings. And this one, I'm so blanked on some of what happens in this, but I remember there's a group of friends that were going, like, I, I think one of the characters had bought a new house. I think it was, like, a couple bought a house, and then they um, were all going there to kind of check out the house, and their friends were coming there. And But when they were getting, you know, into this house, though, they were sort of like, um, they were like, um, having these weird sort of dreams and weird sort of things had happened because it was one of those houses where it's like you know you don't know too much about the history of it and they kind of just bought this thing because they bought the house cheap but then like they come to find out that there was like a history to this place and it kind of becomes like a total like a, a nightmare kind of thing going on for them and this one like I said this one here is called Warnings. The next ones here are all from Gravitas Ventures and this one here is one I was really interested in seeing and it's called um, The Tombs. This one has uh, Jessica Cameron in here, uh, has Marcio Duvall's, who was in a movie called um, Deranged, which I really, really liked. It came out a number of years back, so I was really interested in seeing her in another film. And it's basically, though, about... Um, a group of these people, they were kind of like um, these actors who were in this sh movie called The Tombs, and they're having like a haunted attraction. I think it's like, I think it's basically the haunted attraction is kind of like based on this movie, and they're all there, kind of coming there for the grand opening of this, and they're like live streaming it to the internet or on TV, and there's like a person outside of the haunted house. <clears throat> and I actually saw this haunted house in like a vlog recently. Uh, you know, someone who's going to the UK, like, sh like, didn't wasn't allowed to film inside, but they showed out front of it. So it's a real haunted house in the UK. But basically, though, um, they go and there's like somebody out there going, "Well, welcome to the opening of this tomb's haunted house and all this kind of stuff." And they go in there, and but in there though, um, the one worker who's like setting up the cameras and stuff, he cuts his hand, and it's bl like the blood drips on the skull underneath, and it basically like brings back this like person who's kind of going around the haunted attraction coming after everyone like killing them off and like the actors and the like the celebrity because like basically actors from the film like celebrity guests and stuff like that Mercedes of all his characters like a psychic they're all in there and of course like they're all like dying off one by one by this character you know coming after them you know and I, I thought this was actually a really cool setting and stuff I, I watched a lot of like movies that are like set in like haunted attractions and that kind of stuff this one here has a bunch of different YouTubers in this one like Vitaly's in this movie and it's called and from Gravity's Adventures as well and it's called after party also aaron swartz you know who was from you know um from you know uh, heavyweights he yaks in this film as well and it's basically though about like a group of um 
people who are all like kind of YouTubers, Instagrammers, like uh, social media people. They're all like at this um, party where there's going to be this big after party. And like they all kind of go there to this after party. But of course, you know, when they get there, though, it's like somebody in there wearing this crazy mask is going after them and like, you know, you know, killing them in there. And it's kind of like also they kind of like hint to this movie, like kind of like sort of a whodunit kind of thing too, kind of hinting to could it be this person? Could it be that person? Who exactly is the, you know, the killer in there? And it's basically all these uh, social media people in there doing their vlogs. And it's like they're going, oh, here I am in this haunted house and here I am in this kind of thing. But, you know, getting you know, killed off by the characters and everything. I thought this was actually, though, a fun movie. There's a couple other YouTubers as well in here that I recognize from stuff in this one as well. And the next one here is from Groucho Adventures as well. It's a movie here called One Must Fall. And this was basically, though, about this um, crime scene cleanup crew. And they basically go in there. If there's like a terrible crime scene, they clean up the kind of stuff that had happened and all that kind of thing. But in this one, the group of the people at the crime scene, they all go there to clean up because there's this terrible murder that had happened. This kind of like a warehouse kind of building. And they get in there, though, and it's like kind of like... Um, you know, the killer that was in there is still there. So it's basically the crime scene cleanup crew in there why this crazy deranged killer is still in there. And, and you know, they're coming after the, you know, this killer is in there coming after the crime scene uh, cleanup group. So it's basically them all in there trying to survive and stuff. And there's like some crazy gore and stuff in this movie. And it's just basically this survival thing. It's an interesting concept as well in this one. This one is from Grouch Adventures as well. And I don't think I saw the first movie. Movie. I don't believe so. But this is uh, Along Came the Devil uh, 2. And this is basically, though, from what I was able to figure out, it's a character who was like in the first movie, uh, you know, ended up getting possessed. And like she was helped by the priest, you know, that was played by Bruce Davison's character. And uh, this one is like the sister coming back to, you know, this girl who's the sister of the one who was possessed coming back home after being away for a long time. And basically, though, the. Um, there's all sorts of weird things that have in this town with this possession. It's and it's kind of like possessed, possessed by the devil itself is what it is. And of course, she gets back there, and it's kind of like this possession thing is like coming back again uh, after what happened before. And like Bruce Davidson's character is the one who can kind of help, and it's kind of like um, all sorts of like so some actually some real creepy kind of stuff in this movie. This has on here though a bunch of different interviews on here with the cast and the director on this one. Uh, the next one here is from uh, VCI uh, Enter uh, Entertainment. And these, these are movies that I had not seen these movies in a really long time. And this is a double feature which includes um, Mommy and Mommy 2. Or Mommy, you know, it's called Mommy and then I think it was Mo Mommy, Mommy's Day, I believe was the um, sequel. And this stars Patty McCormick. You know, and this these movies are kind of unrelated sequels to uh, The Bad Seed, which, you know, was because um, Patty McCormick starred in those in that film when she was a kid. And that's a must-watch movie. If you guys have never seen Bad Seed, they also made, like, a TV, uh, you know, remake of that, like, in the 80s, which was okay. I mean, I kind of, I thought it was all right, but nothing tops the original movie. That's, like, a must-watch if you guys have never seen The Bad Seed. And, the, you know, The Bad Seed was about this the girl who was, like, um, uh, this basically killed her student in the class, you know, one of her, you know, what I mean, one of her fellow classmates because he wouldn't give up this uh, penmanship medal that she believed that she deserved and like she does all these terrible things and this is essentially though about like you know un unrelated but sort of the same about her now as a mother and Anybody who kind of crosses her daughter, uh, she comes after them. It's kind of like Serial Mom a little bit, like that kind of vibe of like, like if anyone says anything bad about the daughter or anything like that, or does you know, it's a similar type of thing that happens in this that happened in Bad Seed. But these are cool movies. Like I said, I had not seen these movies in years. And in here though, it has the um, the, uh, the you know, like I said, it has the um, Blu-ray and then a DVD of the film also it has a bonus features disc as well and there's a bunch of different features on here though it has like leonard malton on mommy mommy theatrical trailer mommy bloopers mommy pbs documentary mommy's day pattern record interview by max collins the making of mommy a documentary on the film so lots and lots of features on this one here and the last one here is from um uncorked entertainment and this one um 
is called Holiday, and this is an anthology horror film. I can't remember how many segments is in here. It's basically, though, about this uh, girl who's going to this antique shop looking for a, a Christmas gift for her sister, and um, she kind of talks, it goes to see the, in, in the store, and Jeffrey Combs' character is the guy who runs the store, the antique store, and he's there telling stories about, like, uh, the objects. He's like, oh, I'll help you find something for your sister, and they're looking at, like, things on the mantle and things, you know, on the wall and that kind of stuff, and he, she, he's kind of telling the tale of, oh, yeah, this was this, and uh, there's, like, uh, for example, the one segment, which was my favorite one, was, like, the, um, like, this bloody Santa suit, and that one was about, like, um, this guy who basically went nuts and was wearing the Santa suit and killing people. I'm trying to remember some of the other stories. I always, that's the one thing with the anthology movies is I always blank on what the stories were. They kind of blend together a little bit because I watch so much stuff sometimes I forget what happens in all the stories. But the Santa Claus one was the one that really I thought was the most memorable one in here. Um, but on here, like on here though, this has a commentary track on here. But this is like, if you guys like anthology films, I thought this was actually though a pretty cool anthology film. But anyway though guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.